finally, the day has come. After 2020 and the COVID situation, I was able to travel again. And as soon as I got my negative PCR test, I headed to the airport and went to Lisbon. <laughs> This is the Discoveries Monument, which represents a ship featuring more than 30 statues of historical figures who played a big part in Portugal's Age of Discoveries. Where would you start exploring the city of Lisbon, if not here? The Portuguese sailors discovered large parts of the world years before the rest of Europe, like Brazil, Australia and several countries and islands in Asia. Vasco da Gama was the first European to sail around the southern tip of Africa all the way to India. You will hear his name many times today, so I think it's time to start discovering what Lisbon has to offer. The Commerce Square is and was Lisbon's main square, where the Royal Palace stood for over two centuries until 1755, when it was destroyed by the Great Earthquake firestorm and tsunami. At that time, Marcus of Pombal, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and later Prime Minister, started to rebuild Lisbon and in honor of the ruling king, Jose I, a statue of him was erected in the center of the square. The palace was also rebuilt and now yellow colored buildings surround the square on three sides and the Tagus River on the other one. In the old days, Commercial ships would dock here and unload their goods that Portuguese took during their voyages, like gold, silver, spices, cocoa and coffee. The Rua Augusta Arch is the symbol of the capital's recovery from the earthquake and it is the door to Lisbon and to the main pedestrian street in the city. You can discover the surrounding neighborhoods on foot or hop on the famous Tram 28, which is one of the best ways to explore the old city. Because of the narrow streets, tight turns, this route is unsuitable for modern trams. So these tiny historic trams go through many Lisbon's historic districts and stops in front of the Lisbon Cathedral. The Lisbon Cathedral, or better known as Cé de Lisboa, is the oldest church in the city because it survived many natural disasters. It was built by Portugal's first king, Alfonso I, on the site of an old mosque when Lisbon was recaptured from the Moors. Another reminder of the Moorish times is the St. George Castle, which was built on the highest hill in Lisbon. It was a wedding gift to Alfonso's English wife Hence, it's got its name from the patron saint of England. The old fort was transformed into a royal residence and the castle was the setting where King Manuel I received Vasco da Gama after his voyage to India. This strange matter building is actually an elevator called Santa Justa, which connects the Baixa district with the higher Carmo Square. Legend has it that Lisbon, like Rome, was built on seven hills. The city is said to be Europe's second oldest capital after Athens. The high hills made transportation harder in the city, so this steam-powered elevator was built. If you get to the Carmo Square, you will find the ruins of Carmo Convent, which is also a reminder of the earthquake. Unfortunate coincidence that the earthquake happened on November the 1st, which is the All Saints Day in the Catholic Church. Let's head to Belém, which is, by the way, the Portuguese word for Bethlehem. Lisbon became a worldwide center of commerce thanks to the discoveries, and in order to protect the city, several fortresses were built. 
The Balam Tower has five floors, which lead to the roof terrace. It was used as prison, a lighthouse, and now this UNESCO World Heritage Site is the symbol of Lisbon. The Geronimos Monastery is the most impressive symbol of Portugal's power and wealth during the Age of Discovery. The building was designed by a Portuguese architect to commemorate the return of Vasco da Gama from India. According to the story, he and his crew spent their last night here before their trip. And you will find his tomb inside the Church of Santa Maria. This shop close by is the center of the famous traditional Portuguese custard tart, the Pastel de Belém, or also known as Pastel de Nata. After the liberal revolution of 1820, many convents and monasteries were closed down. The monks of Geronimo's monastery started to sell their pastries at the nearby sugar refinery for some extra money. Unfortunately, the monastery was shut down and the secret recipe was sold to that sugar refinery who opened their own pastry shop. And if you are hungry, head to the Time Out Market, which is not just a fresh produce market, but also a food court. There are more than 30 restaurants and bars, some overseen by Michelin-starred Portuguese chef. Here you will find basically every cuisine you could wish for, from traditional Portuguese seafood to pizza or sushi. A few steps from here you will find the famous Pink Street. Lisbon was an important port city, which means lots of sailors would come into the city to gamble, drink and have fun. Shady bars and brothels opened in the tiny alleys and transformed this area into Lisbon's former red light district. If you think it is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, you are wrong. It is the 25th of April Bridge, the longest suspension bridge in Europe. Why the similarity? It was designed by the same American bridge company who created the American sister version. Since the founding of the official kingdom of Portugal, the country has been dominantly Christian. Cristo Rey, inspired by the famous statue in Rio de Janeiro, is an enormous monument to Christ, standing on the southern bank of the river. The panorama of Lisbon is amazing from here. Miraduros are lookout points which provide amazing view over the city. There are several in Lisbon and the perfect place to see the sunset. My journey in Portugal has just begun and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. You can download my travel guide about Lisbon from below with maps and several useful tips. And don't forget to check out my other videos about Portugal. If you have an extra day in Lisbon, visit the nearby city of Sintra or go to Porto, a world-famous wine region. If you want to relax and enjoy the beach, I recommend Algarve, the amazing southern coast of Portugal. If you are into traveling, hit the like button and smash that subscribe button below. This way you can help me and in return you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. I think it is a win-win for both of us. And in the meantime, watch my other travel guide videos or check out my Instagram to see the photos I took. See you next time!